How's it going, everyone? It is Dragon. We're back with another chapter of Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest, chapter 129 Genai and Kotetsu. This chapter's cover page has a Wendy on it, which is very coincidental because I just posted the Wendy character discussion video. Check that out if you haven't already. And she's in the bakery. Uh, baking some bread and having a nice sniff of the bread. I like cooking and stuff so I think this cover is very fun and just kind of fun to see characters in the universe making foods. Kind of reminds me of that one filler episode we had with like Juvia and the rest of the girls making like cakes. We're picking up the actual chapter with Gray and Wendy trapped at the Gold Owl Guild. Which they're having Rogue watching them from afar while the Gold Owl members are all taunting them. Which Gray is still not having it. He's got such a determined look on his face. Which Wendy is like super mopey. And Carl is just struggling to escape. Which glad to see that you get Magic Ceiling Stone coming back into play. That's not been around for a while. Which it turns out that Psy transmuted Magic Ceiling Stone into this rope to nullify their magic. Which the first time I read this chapter, I thought Grey was just like strong enough to break this rope even without magic. But it turns out that not only Grey's rope broke, but also Wendy and Carla. Turns out the person that freed them was a rogue. Turns out that turning that stone into a rope was a bad idea because... Even Rogue says it that like, you know, stone or like handcuffs or something. I probably couldn't have broke this, but like the fact that you turn it into a rope, like I could cut it pretty easily, which the Gold Owl members are all freaking out like, oh no, they're all freed. Is he from Fairy Tale? Rogue takes that personally, like how dare you lump me in with those guys? I am not from their group, which he hits them all with a Shadow Dragon Slash. With Grey thanking him and following it up with an ice make lance. And the rest of this panel is just, you know, them being caught up as to where they are. That they're, you know, in the Gold Owl Guild and that everyone has been taken away. And Rogue, Grey, and Wendy all continue their beatdown on the Gold Owl Guild. With Wendy doing a Sky Dragon's Roar. Which Grey's thinking pretty highly of himself here because he's like, what's the big deal about these alchemy guilds? You know, these guys here, they're a bunch of weaklings. You said it too soon, Grey. You just said it too soon. Because the second he, you know, calls out these guys for being weak, that's when Rogue says, like, stay on guard. I sense, like, something different's coming. And you get a silhouette of, you know, two guys coming towards them and they're just talking in the distance like you've really done a number on us it would be pretty disgraceful of us to you know rampage with these materials that were brought to us you get the reveal of who the silhouetted figures are honestly some very interesting designs for fairy tale i mean you quite literally have like no one ever dressed like this in the show and the names of these two is genai and kotetsu with you getting kind of a close-up shot on their faces to reveal their names. These two keep referring towards like Wendy and Grey as like materials and Grey's just like materials. Like why, why does he keep calling us materials? And Sai just straight up tells them that the main reason why they want them is that a wizard's magic power is a very valuable alchemy material. And because of what happened in the labyrinth, you know, the master got wind of it and got super interested in these fairy tale guild members. Sai went maximum crazy mode because he's like, you know, that's how we got the request to get you guys from fairy tale, which these two are not having it. And they turned Sai into smoke. Which alchemy is all kinds of weird because this apparently does not kill him. You know, it's basically like them setting Sai out on the sidelines. Because you get Genai saying to Sai that, you know, you need to stand back and be quiet. Which it looks like he's going to be fighting Grey because Grey calls it smoke magic. Which he gets corrected and that this is actually smoke alchemy. Which actually should be a pretty interesting fight for Grey. Because, like, how, how do you fight, like, a guy using smoke? Because it's not, like, a tangible thing. We cut over to Natsu, Yukino, and Sting. And they're entering where Lucy's being kept. Lucy and Happy are so excited for them to be there rescuing them. Sting does not know what the heck he caused. Because, like, 
Natsu bursts in the room is like, Lucy, you good? Like, she didn't do anything weird to you, right? And she's like, yeah, we're, we're fine. Why are you asking this all of a sudden? Like, what, what's going on, Natsu? Sting goes up to this person that kidnapped Lucy and starts interrogating her. Like, you know, are you the one that kidnapped them? Like, why, why are you doing this? And she's all crying like, you wouldn't hurt a frail old woman, would you? And Natsu's like, hold my beer. Because he tells Sting to move out of the way and he just straight up sends her team rocketing out the building. With him yelling, you know, if you mess with my friends, I don't care if you're old or a kid, I will still beat you up. Which I love that, like, Yukino, and particularly Sting, is, like, absolutely shocked that Natsu's doing this. And Happy and Lucy are just sitting in the back corner like, okay, Natsu, we get it. You do this every weekend. So Lucy and Happy are officially saved, and they thank Natsu. Which, gosh dang, Natsu, you are, like, next level now, because, you know, this old lady's, like, burning on the ground. And Natsu's just like, oh yeah, you can do whatever you want to her, Sting. And Sting's just like... What the heck, Natsu? What 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 are you going on about? And they get the whole kind of explanation that, you know, we just got with Gray and Wendy, that the whole reason that, you know, they want wizards at Gold Owl is for, you know, alchemy materials. And the second that they're like they want wizards, they hear someone in the background talking to them, saying to be more precisely what we're wanting in you fairy tale wizards, it's your magic power. And it turns out that person talking to them in the shadows was Athena. And you get a reaction shot of everyone like, who is this chick? And you get Athena introducing herself, you know, saying that she's here to pick them up all as prisoners. And the second she says the name Athena, they're like, oh crap, this is the weapon Athena that we're like trying to hunt down. And out of nowhere, Natsu starts crying. And not just Natsu, literally everyone else in the room starts crying as well. Which apparently that's her power to make them all cry that she transmuted tears. And that is the end of our chapter. So my thoughts. Athena's power has to be pretty broken, especially since they're comparing her to like Zerif. Now, if she can already involuntarily control people's like body functions aka making everyone in that room cry on demand and particularly like yukino she says she's sad so like she also made them have the feeling of sadness that's a pretty strong power but you know even if you just make them cry that's i don't feel enough to take down everyone in that room now she isn't at full power and you don't know what her power level is right now so who knows how potentially strong she is to me with her doing that whole crying scene i got very much lockade vibes you know him being able to to use his magic to control people's like pleasure and that stuff when he was fighting Yukino and Sting and Rogue and all of them. Kind of a situation you're getting. I mean, you can't really gauge what else she does because that's like the only ability she's ever used now. And it just clicked in my head that that room is filled with two dragon slayers and two celestial wizards. So that's kind of fun. The biggest problem we have is we don't really know how alchemy fully works and like how it interacts with magic and stuff. So, I mean, pretty much all these fights, they're going in blind. Going back to Grey and Wendy and Rogue at the beginning of the chapter. I mean, we don't know what uh, Kotetsu does, but like at least you know what one of them does for their alchemy so far that he's using smoke. But I severely doubt that smoke is his only thing. Now we didn't get any update whatsoever for Minerva, Urza, and Jalal. So a little bit of a bummer there. We could have had their side get set up a little bit. If they're already sending Gold Owl members to the kidnapping locations already, that means they pretty much know that their plan was probably compromised or they were going to pick up uh, the kidnappies and pretty much everyone that they've sent so far is probably a high level member of the guild otherwise what do you guys think of the chapter leave it in the comments below 
Like I said at the beginning of the video, I posted a Wendy character discussion video that took quite a bit of time to make, so check that out if you're able to. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and this is Drago, signing out.